Here we are, the final part of the series. In this video, I will add the rest of the details to the artwork. Starting with the earrings. I want the earrings to be simple and I don't want it to draw too much attention. I was going for a weird style, but midway through the process I changed my mind and make it even simpler than I initially intended. Just two simple nesting circles, no shiny jewels whatsoever. Next, I attach the earrings to the rig. I can just attach them to the headbone, but I want to try something different this time. So I modified the rig with some additional bones to control the earrings. Next, I check the material and find out that the subsurface scattering is not strong enough in some areas. So I add a vertex color set and name it SSS, which stands for subsurface scattering. However, Blender 2.8 can't seem to paint more than three vertex color sets at the moment. And you can see that nothing happens as I paint the subsurface color. So I delete the specular set in order to paint the subsurface color. I don't use the specular color set anyway. Now I paint more weight in the thin areas such as the ears, mouth, nose and eyelids. And then use this in the material to drive the subsurface scale. The higher scale value will make the light travel deeper under the surface. Next touch is the material for the fabric. I think the simple white she's wearing looks good and uh, it only needs some fabric textures. But maybe there is an even better look so I must try a few variations after adding the fabric textures. I already have the texture from my library so I just add them here and hook them up with the principal shader. 
If you wonder where I got these, they are from Substance Source, a library of textures, which is one of the products offered with the Substance subscription. The other products include Substance Designer and Substance Painter. However, before you go ahead and subscribe to their service, be warned that you must have a Wacom tablet in order to use Substance Painter, which is the most important product. In 2018, they pushed an update which fixed some bugs for Wacom tablets, but that broke other brands of tablets. They acknowledged the bug, but uh, refused to fix it ever since. In the latest update, the bug is still there, but they, they removed it from the list and a Wacom tablet is now the official hardware requirement to use Substance Painter. Which kinda sucks, cause I really love Substance Painter. But whatever. So anyway, as I experiment with different colors, I find yellow to be pretty good as well and I can't decide which color is better, white or yellow. So I mix them up with a simple stripe textures and then add some color adjustment and that's the end of it. Next stuff is the background. I want to make effect studio backgrounds, so I try to create a gradient using the screen texture coordinate, but in the end I make the background in the post process instead. This way the background will not cause any change to the lighting condition.
it almost done but the eyes are still blank at the moment so it's time to make some textures for the eyes so I make a UV map for the eyes using project from view method and then I generate two different radial gradients and uh, combine them into a 2D vector and use that as the texture coordinates instead of the UV. This is very important because the eye texture that I am about to bring in requires this kind of texture coordinates. This is the texture. I created this about a year ago and it has three layers and ambient occlusions for each layer. Now this is a very complicated texture. By the time I created that, only God and I understand it. And now a year later, only God understand it. Recreating something like this will take me a, a whole day of thinking. So yeah, I'm not gonna do that. However, I still remember some of the notes inside, so to some degree I can go inside and make some changes, which I am doing now. Now it's time for some optimizations to the coat layer of the eyeballs. The eyes are now done and I make one more test render to tweak in the post process. The process of the background is slow, so while tweaking the foreground I disable the, the background for faster performance.
everything looks good and it's time to make the final render. I set the frame size to 4K, increase the render quality and let the computer run overnight. And uh, that is the end of the series. Here is the final render for your viewing pleasure. Blender 2.8 beta has changed since I recorded this series, but I hope you still learned something because the, the changes are not too big. I'm gonna wait until 2.8 is released before remaking the basic series. Hopefully it will be around July. Until then, I'm gonna make tutorials for the people who already knew the basics and can figure out the changes all by themselves. And I'll see you next time.